Welcome to your Bobby Destiny News Update for Friday, December 17. Even as government moves to lift key COVID-19 restrictions, a well-known hotelier has made it clear his property will be sticking to the current strict protocols. Managing Director of the Green Resort Paul Doyle revealed that the Cliffside St. Philip property will not be indulging in parties. On Wednesday, health officials announced the resumption of FETs and large-scale open-air social activities after almost a year of restrictions and bans. My response to my staff is, I don't think this is the year um, to bring people together. Um, and we're not marketing that way. We're marketing that everything will be done from a very safe point of view, and I feel very responsible for that. So I think it's how we deal with the protocols, and uh, we're, we're strict about it, and people appreciate that. Um, we also, um, you know, you're seeing me right now without my mask on, but that's a very unusual uh, time. Um, we also, all of our staff are, most 82% are fully vaccinated, and, and most of those are now boosted, have a booster shot. And, uh, and the balance, the 18%, and hopefully that gets to a smaller number, are we PCR test them every week. Meanwhile, the Korean Resort has been enjoying a robust uptick in guests. Doyle says bookings are stronger than ever. Business, I think, is a huge pent-up demand for tourism. And I think uh, all going well, we should have a very good year. Yeah. In terms of numbers, what percentages? We... We are actually booking at a higher rate than we've ever booked before. Um, so, as I've told my staff, this is the best year we've had since 1887. And those bookings, are those projected bookings run from now till about? Right through to, let, let's say, summer, but obviously people, I think, are booking later now than they, than they usually do. Um, so most of the bookings are in the next, in the, in the near future. I think people are just used to feel they need to be kind of protected because of something could change. Substance abuse among employees must be analyzed and addressed as it could have a detrimental effect on both businesses and workers. That's the view of Research and Information Officer with the National Council on Substance Abuse, Dr. Jonathan Yearwood. Speaking during this week's launch of the NCSA's Workplace Survey, which will explore the level of substance abuse within the workforce, he said these cases cannot be ignored given their impact. More importantly, the widespread alcohol and drug use are essential issues in workplaces because they can increase accidents and injuries, absenteeism, and, in, and inappropriate behavior. They can impose an economic burden on employers, governments, and society. Employers have a duty under health and safety laws to protect as far as reasonable the health, safety, and welfare of employees and others affected by their activities. Yearwood added that the NCSA's workplace survey will help frame policies related to substance abuse on the job. Participants will benefit from the following. A curriculum for training of trainers. A train of trainers is to, the intention is to build a pool of competent instructors who can teach the material to other people. Development of workplace templates for drug education training. Development of workplace templates for drug policies. A template for workplace screening and testing to identify substance abuse problems. A development of procedures on referrals for substance abuse treatment. The death of a well-known street character, Ricardo Wood, has prompted calls from the Barbados Alliance to end homelessness for authorities to provide drug rehabilitation and psychiatric treatment for the homeless. On Wednesday night, police discovered Wood's body on the compound of a business place on King Street near White Park Road, St. Michael, after responding to reports that a man had collapsed in the area. BAEH President Kimar Safri lamented that Wood battled with a drug addiction that he failed to conquer despite repeated assistance from the Alliance and his loved ones. The problem is that we are seeing where people don't want to come off the street but have a serious drug or mental problem. And for the organization, we can only offer our help through rehabilitation, reintegration and some of the services that we offer to the clients. But what we would like to see is that when we deem clients a threat to themselves or to society, that we have some policy that puts take them off the street into rehabilitation, uh, whether it be drug rehabilitation, psychiatric treatment, and then through a reintegration program that sees them 
a by chance going back into mainstream society if we can. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Thompson. I'm a visually impaired person. I am also a member of the National United Society of the Blind of Barbados. I am vaccinated. I took the vaccination due to the fact that I am diabetic, I'm asthmatic, and I also have high blood pressure. I had no side effects. Everything went calm and smooth, as my doctor said it would go. Please, people, go ahead and do the right thing. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, one of the region's foremost health experts says Jamaica should focus on getting more people to take at least the first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine rather than boost the shots. We get the details from TVJ's Ocean Masters. Initially, the minister was only offering boosters to people over 60 years old and health workers. Only the Pfizer and the Johnson & Johnson vaccines are being offered as boosters. But now, Director of Family Health Services in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Melody Ennis, says AstraZeneca is not being used as a booster. The vast majority of persons in country receive the AstraZeneca vaccine, and AstraZeneca is not at this time recommending that AstraZeneca be used as a booster shot. With the move to make booster shots available to Jamaicans 18 years and older, the World Health Organization has argued that vaccines are still needed for first doses across the globe. It's the reason epidemiologist Professor Peter Figueroa wants those who are yet to receive the jab to be prioritized. People who have not yet been vaccinated, and remember approximately 50% of our seniors over the age of 60 have not yet been vaccinated with even one dose, much less two doses of vaccine. Those are the persons who are most vulnerable to both the circulating Delta variant and the Omicron. On the international front, rescue efforts are on the way in the Philippines after one of the most powerful storms in the world this year has hit land. Tens of thousands of people are being moved to emergency shelters in the southern and central parts of the country. Officials say around 100,000 villages are in the projected path of the typhoon. Jamila Allendogan is in Manila with more on the rescue efforts. It is the most powerful storm to hit the Philippines this year. 100,000 people have already fled their homes. Typhoon Rai made landfall on Thursday and continues to batter the regions of Visayas and Mindanao. Coast guards are rushing to evacuate hundreds of residents after incessant rains flooded their communities. Young and old, many are forced to leave their homes with only the clothes on their backs. Residents carry what they can, with many hoping any damage will be limited and they'll be able to return home soon. The Philippines is no stranger to natural disasters. It is constantly battered by storms and volcanic eruptions. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.